In the song you write, we had no money, but I was as rich as could be. What does it mean to you to be rich in life? Well, that little line of, uh, although we had no money, I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors that Mama made for me because Mama sewed love in every stitch. She took the time to tell me that story about Joseph in the coat of many colors in order to instill some pride, you know, in me about that. The true measure of success is in how you deal with it. I mean, there's a saying and a song that says a man can make money, but money cannot make a man. And there's so much truth in that. You can make all the money in the world, but if you're not happy, you're not a success. So to me, I feel like I'm a success because I enjoy my successes. I enjoy the fact that I've accomplished all these things. I remember to remember all the things that mattered to me then. They matter to me now. I've made it a point not to ever forget who I was, how I am. You should never be ashamed of yourself, your family, your religion, no matter what. That's your family. That's who you are. And so I really measure success in how you deal with the money you make, how you give back with the fame you have. What inspired you to do all these projects based on your story of the Coat of Many Colors? Well, it was important to me to share my story of Coat of Many Colors, which is a true story from my childhood. It has touched the lives of so many people through the years, even in a song. Because since it became a hit, I've had so many people say that it has healing qualities for them because almost everybody has been through something. Somebody's made fun of them about something, made them feel less than they should feel about one thing or another. It's kind of a rags to riches kind of story too for me. And people always love that. And I love that too. I love that I'm a mountain Cinderella, so to speak. And so um, I really thought that it would make a good movie. In fact, I knew it would. Different people have asked me through the years, why didn't I make it into a movie? It just hadn't been time, but now it was time. And it just did so well. And I want people to take away from the movie what the story is. It's about love. It's about acceptance. It's about deliverance. It's about hope. It's about, uh, it's anti-bullying. That's a really big subject these days. I think it's really good for kids. And in fact, they even teach uh, about, a, uh, from the little Coat of Many Colors illustrated book that I have out uh, in schools about just accepting people and their differences and that it's okay to be who you are. We're not all supposed to be the same. So I want people to take that feeling of faith, family, fun, and just acceptance and just love it. What do you hope children take away from your Coat of Many Colors book? Well, children love the story of Coat of Many Colors because it is an anti-bullying story. It is about family, and it is about, you know, someone, you know, overcoming. And I think a lot of kids, you know, kind of relate to it for different reasons. They might have been the bullies. They might have been the little kid that's been made fun of. There's a little song I wrote called Making Fun Ain't Funny. And uh, it's kind of in with this little illustrated book. It just talks about, you know, just accepting people and not making fun. How would you feel if it was you? But we decided to do a little book because it gives the kids a chance to kind of kind of follow along with the story and give some thought about all those elements that it is. And so it's really a special little book. And I think it'll be good for children to learn to accept people and their differences and to not bully and make light and make fun. So hopefully it'll be something good for the kids, and I think it will be. What advice do you have on finding strength, hope, and purpose in the face of adversity? I really lean on God for everything. There's a, a line that I heard when I was little in the church that through God all things are possible. And even though in my church, which was a very you know, high-spirited church, and they speak, you know, they preached a lot of hellfire and damnation, a lot of fear ta tactics and all that. But I remembered that one particular line, and I made it my own. I believed that, that through God, all things are possible. And I have proved that because I pray every day that God will lead me and guide me, take all the wrong things and all the wrong people out of my life and put all the right and good ones in, and that I'll know, you know, what to do. So I really think that the key to my success as far as holding myself together is that I believe in something greater than myself. 
I believe in God and I believe that strength comes from that and I will always believe it and I'll always be hanging on to that. Why did you decide to found Imagination Library and why is that cause so important to you? I really think it's important to get books in the hands of as many children as we can. And I started the Imagination Library because of my own family. A lot of my own relatives didn't get a chance to go to school. My own dad couldn't read and write because he was from a big family back there in the mountains and they had to go to work to help feed the rest of the family. They couldn't get to school, it was too far away, or they couldn't spare them. And so uh, I started the program because of that in my home county, the Imagination Library, and it did so well that the governor at that time, Phil Bredesen, uh, he loved the program and he took it and put it all over Tennessee. Then we went all over the United States, into Canada. Now we're all over the world and we're, up, we're heading toward giving away 100 million books. And so we, we actually give books to a million kids a month. And so... Uh, that's a good feeling to be able to do that. And it started from a sincere place. And I think when you work in, in your charity work, I think as a celebrity, when you get in a position to help, you should. But you should also actually invest in things that are personal to you that you can be passionate about. Not just, oh, no, not another one of them. Oh, we have to do that again. I look forward to everything to do with the Imagination Library. In fact, I'm heading out to do some concerts uh, in my hometown. It's a community-based program. United Way has been very, very helpful uh, with helping us with all that, but it's a, it's a worthwhile program and you can't get enough books to enough children. You, Lily Tomlin, and Jane Fonda made the film Nine to Five in 1980, taking on sexism in the workplace. How do you feel about the progress women have made? Well, first of all, I was so proud to be part of Nine to Five. Jane Fonda had the the foresight and the insight to do a show like that. It was re really based on a, a company called Nine to Five. I believe it's about women in the workplace. You know, equal pay for uh, you know for equal work and all that. And it was a it was controversial idea at the time, but a necessary one. And I was just proud to be part of that. And the fact that we've come a long way. We've still got a long way to go. But I really think we broke some really great grounds as women, and I, I'd really like to think that that little movie, Nine to Five, really has done a lot to further that cause. What is the source of all your energy and inspiration? I love what I do that gives me energy. I love my fans. I love the love they give me back. That creates energy. Nothing to me is more special and when I'm out on stage and I look out there and I see all those fans that really, really seem to be touched by what I'm doing, they're laughing with me, they're talking with me, they're listening, they seem to be really interested in it. And I ask God all the time to let me say and do and be something to uplift people and to, you know, let, let my work really, you know, let him shine through what I do. So I really love it and I think it's a very energizing thing. I've never got tired of it, and I, I won't ever retire. If I get sick or my husband gets sick, well, that's another thing. But if left up to me, if, as long as I can do it, I plan to continue to perform and to sing and to write, to tour when I can, and just to do whatever I can to make the fans happy and myself happy. There are so many serious issues impacting our country and world today. What encourages you and gives you hope? Well, God gives me hope. People give me hope. I love life. I know that we are a great people. I know that we are a great country. I know that we go through our things. I know that uh, we'll rise above it. And I pray all the time that God will bring us together, let us try a little harder. And we may have to get to heaven before we actually ever see peace in this world. But we could do a whole lot better by just kind of changing a lot of things within our own circle in the space that we work and live in. If we tried a little harder, if we had enough circles going on, it would be a circle of love and, you know, we could kind of put it all together and make it one great big thing. But I just wish, you know, life was a little better. I just wish people tried a little harder. And I figure, I pray all the time, so I figure whatever happens is going to be God's will whether it's to fulfill prophecy or whether it's just the way things are. But I do know that we personally could do a lot to change 
the future if we wanted to. What do you think the world most needs right now? Well, I wish I had written that song, What the World Needs Now is Love. I didn't, but that's a great song. I still believe that that's what we need more than anything now is love, a little bit more acceptance, understanding, forgiveness, listening instead of just talking. I mean, we're not hard of hearing, we're just hard listening. So I think we need to try a little harder to get inside the hearts and minds of, of other people and not just dwell on our own warped up sense of things. <laughs> what keeps you feeling so positive and what advice do you have for keeping a positive outlook? Well, you gotta try to be happy, just like some people work at being miserable. I mean, I was born with a happy heart. I want things to be good because it just kills me when things are not good. And if I wake up in the mornings and I find there's something going wrong, I try my best to see what I can do, make it better by the end of the day. And I pray hard about it. I work hard at it. And I just try to keep a good positive attitude. You can't change everything, but you can change some things. And by changing some things, it might change it enough to where it's bearable. Or you might, you know, can do something to lift somebody else's burden. Even when yours are too hard to carry, if you try to help somebody with theirs, yours don't seem as bad, I think. So I think we just need to try to just do a little better. What is the most valuable lesson you have learned in your life? There's a saying that says, to thine own self be true. I really think there's so much more to that than meets the ear or meets the eye. I really think if you know who you are and you can come to terms with that, accept that and love that, and if you can understand your talents, what your gifts may be and how to maybe develop them or at least how to pray about trying to get some strength or some encouragement and some insight on how to deal with it. I just think you really have to know who you are. And early on, I heard that in my early life, just like through God all things are possible and to thine own self be true. Those have been two things that I have kept and I work inside that and believe and create and strengthen my faith through both those things. So I think if you're comfortable with yourself and know yourself, you're going to shine and radiate and other people are going to be drawn to you. And by doing that, I think you can do a lot for people because you'll have a lot of help because people want to be around you.